Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm Takuya Okuda from uh, the University of Tokyo. And uh, the organizers uh, asked me, actually, uh, not just boundary, but uh, also um, extended operators in uh, <laughs> well, actually supersymmetric localization with extended, extended operators uh, in supersymmetric uh, quantum field theories. So I think, uh, OK, by extended, wh what is meant is that uh, uh, the operators are not necessarily local. So they can have uh, some non-trivial dimensions. And the examples include line operators, uh, such as Wilson, Tofuft, uh, line operators. And uh, there are also surface operators. And then uh, here come uh, boundaries, uh, interface, well, interfaces, also known as uh, domain walls. And uh, we can also have a uh, coupled system. of QFTs of uh, different dimensionalities. I think I can include them as um, examples of uh, extended operators in quantum field theories. Uh, and, uh, and we, we can do various things. And uh, uh, we can indeed uh, do supersymmetric localization with uh, these extended operators. And also, uh, they play uh, significant roles in the, the 2D, 4D, or AGT correspondence, or related uh, 3D, 3D correspondence, and so on. And uh, uh, these objects are also important in uh, other uh, contexts, such as conformal bootstrap, uh, holography, and so on. And uh, maybe most significantly, uh, especially the, the line operators or loop operators were first introduced as order parameters uh, of uh, gauge theories. So uh, the, behaviors, uh, the, the, uh, the behaviors of their expectation values or correlation functions uh, uh, as, cap as functions of some parameters uh, uh, can be used to classify possible phases of quantum field theories. And uh, so today, I will focus on uh, the boundaries and the interface, well, the mostly boundaries in uh, <laughs> two dimensions. So this is the topic of today. And uh, well, at least my current plan is to talk about line operators, uh, Wilson and Tooth operators in four dimensions. Uh, tomorrow. That's my plan. And uh, okay, so especially uh, so so today's topic. Uh, it, this is uh, about in two dimensions. So uh, uh, today's topic is closely related to what Benini discussed uh, last week. And uh, okay, the, the topic of tomorrow. Right? Uh, Tomorrow, the topic will be in about four dimensions, so it will be closely related to what, uh, what uh, Peters discussed uh, last week. OK. And uh, I do believe that the examples I'm, I will discuss are important examples. But I, I, I also want to uh, emphasize and illustrate the general principles uh, that are that can be learned uh, from the examples uh, I will uh, express, uh, concretely discuss. So, so these are, so what I, I believe uh, my, my examples will be interesting and important, but I, I also want to emphasize the general aspects. Okay. So I usually, uh, I, give, I write down uh, the plan of my uh, presentation. So uh, for today's lecture, uh, here, here is the plan. 
So I uh, first, uh, 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 well, I'm already uh, giving the uh, giving an overview of my uh, lectures, and uh, then I will uh, discuss the so-called B-type boundary conditions, and then uh, I'll explain that uh, something called matrix factorization uh, will be necessary. And then I will actually perform uh, supersymmetric localization and uh, explain how to compute the so-called hemisphere partition function. Okay, and uh, then I will uh, tell you that the hemisphere partition, fun the hemisphere partition function has a, um, has a meaning as the central charge of a D brain when the two-dimensional theory is used as a world sheet theory of type two string theory, and also as an application of the uh, Hemisphere partition function, I, will, uh, I, I plan to discuss the interface. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, questions are welcome. So uh, feel free to, uh, peep, uh, feel free to uh, stop me and ask questions anytime. Okay. So um, I want to introduce uh, B-type boundary conditions. And, uh, B and in order to do that, I, I need to explain the setup. So this is uh, basically the same as uh, what uh, Benny discussed. So uh, we, we are going to consider two-dimensional n equals 2 comma 2 theory on, on the two-sphere. Or well, okay, or hemisphere. Uh, all right. Uh, actually, I want to give you references. So, uh, as a general reference, general reference, elementary. Pedagogical reference. Uh, I I give you uh, section thirty nine of a textbook uh, mirror called mirror symmetry, uh, written by uh, Hori and other people. Uh, well, y you can Google. Uh, okay, you can Google mirror symmetry, Hori, uh, and then you can find a PDF from uh, Clay, Clay Mathematical it's Institute. Also a of paper if you Google mirror symmetry. That's true. Uh, That's the book. Yeah, but, but this is the book. Yes. <laughs> okay, maybe you can put the Clay, Clay, and then uh, you you will find a PDF, or you can you can get it from Inspire. Um, so this is a textbook and. Uh, the, the actual content of my lecture today will be uh, based on, uh, on my paper on the hemisphere partition function. Um, and actually, on the hemisphere partition function, there are three papers. Uh, one is by Sugishita and Terashima. Terashima was here last week. Uh, another. Honda and myself, and uh, yet another one by Hori and Romo. Uh, these are all from uh, 13, well, August 2013. So basically, these papers were um, posted on the archive simultaneously. And, uh, um, of course, so, well, so naturally, I will be uh, mostly using the conventions of my own paper. Um, yes. And the conven our convention is very similar to uh, 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 Doru, Doru, Benini, uh, sorry, Doru, uh, Leflog, uh, Gomis, and B were using. Yeah. Okay. 
So, um, so, so, so the set of is, is uh, two-dimensional n equals uh, two comma two, and uh, uh, because uh, we are on a curved manifold, uh, we want to consider uh, some background, the supergravity background. And uh, okay, I'm I'm uh, particular. I'm interested in a particular version of uh, two-dimensional uh, supergravity called U1b, and this is a, a dimensional reduction of uh, four-dimensional uh, uh, n, n equals one supergravity, uh, the new minimal uh, supergravity, which uh, Festucci discussed uh, last week. Okay, so so in particular, so the ve uh, vector R symmetry. Uh, yeah, so, so this supergravity can be coupled to a theory uh, with uh, a vector R symmetry. And I, I want to consider the uh, following metric. So um, let's see. So if so, theta and phi are the usual polar coordinate on the two sphere, and f is uh, 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 if behaves like like this for theta close to zero, and uh, okay, because we are because we are interested in essentially the hemisphere. Uh, Let's see, I want to uh, restrict to, well, I, I actually, OK. Mm. Yeah, OK, so this is the beha behavior for theta uh, near, near 0. And uh, OK, o on the two sphere, um, theta takes value be between 0 and pi. And uh, phi uh, takes values between 0 and 2 pi, as usual. OK, uh, and uh, sometimes I would use the, the field by. So, uh, and, and I will be using a, the hat to denote the, the frame index. So, so this is the index for the uh, uh, field by. So, so E1 hat is F times D theta, and uh, E2 hat is L sine theta D phi. Okay. Um, well, if f is simply uh, L, then this is uh, this corresponds to the round metric of met radius L, and uh, we may also take L squared cosine theta cosine square theta plus L tilde squared sine square theta, uh, where uh, both L and L tilde are some parameters, positive parameters. And uh, this uh, is also a good example of, of F. I need to experiment a bit. And uh, okay, we have we also have U1 R symmetry uh, gauge field. So VR, so this is a, a one form, one minus L over F of theta d phi, like this. And if you remember, uh, I think from uh, Benin's talk. Um, this supergravity, this version of supergravity also contains uh, something I think he, uh, uh, he denoted by H. So this is a, a, a gravity photon field strength. And this is 
Okay, this is uh, proportional to one over f. Okay, um, am I clear? Uh, is everything clear? No question. Okay. Uh, do you know what data the partition function is going to depend on? I mean, for example, in the 4D case, Guido was explaining that it depends only on the complex structure, etc. So, mm -hmm. do, you, do you know if the similar analysis has been done specifically in 2D and what the conclusion is? Well, I know the result of the localization calculation, and uh, let, let's see. Um, yeah, it, it depends on the context. But for example, for the hem hemisphere partition function in the conformal case, there is an analysis uh, <laughs> using the supervisor anomaly by uh, Bacchus and Plenkner, and uh, 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 they showed that uh, it, it depends holomorphically on the Kera, basically Kera module. Right? I see. And, uh, yeah, so, so and, and here I introduced the deformation, so L and L tilde, but... Uh, um, so do you know if they exhaust all the, all the deformations of S2? So S2 partition function, uh, there is no analog of B for S2 partition function. Yeah, so uh, here I introduced the uh, deformation, but uh, the partition function actually is independent of the deformation. So, so uh, it's actually enough to uh, compute the partition function on the round, round Round sphere. Uh, actually, for the masking, is that if you take a more general metric, is it, are you sure that this is the only answer you get? Or if you take a crazy, some complex structure, et cetera, is there a possibility of getting another answer? For the two sphere, I don't, I don't think there are many okay, options. Okay, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry, say that again? No. You say when theta goes to zero, f theta approaches to n. Yes. So then it becomes zero. Uh, this one? Yeah, yeah, instead of a single point. Yeah, so, right. So, so yeah, in, indeed, f goes, yeah, uh, this part becomes zero, uh, at theta equals zero, and that's necessary for, the, uh, uh, for this gauge field to be smooth, because this is, a, this is an angular variable. Yeah, um, I think I'm g going actually too slowly. So, um, okay. Uh, now, um, I should now write down the generalized the Keating uh, spinner. Okay. Can, can you read? Okay. So, um, so this is a, a condition for uh, supersymmetry to be preserved. Epsilon is a two-component spinner. And okay, I'm going to define the uh, gamma matrix. You'll notice this soon. So there are now uh, two kinds of uh, spinners, epsilon and epsilon bar. So minus 1 over 2f, gamma mu, gamma 3, epsilon bar. Uh, epsilon and epsilon bar have uh, opposite R charges. And uh, okay, my convention for gamma matrices is uh, the theta hat corresponds to, okay, one, gamma 1 hat. This is okay. The, the first sigma power matrix, gamma five hat is gamma two hat minus i i and uh, uh, gamma three just uh, denotes the chirality matrix in uh, two dimensions. Yes. Uh, okay. And on the on the round sphere, we have SU. Uh, thrush SU uh, 2 thrush 1 symmetry. But uh, um, the deformation, and also uh, when we put a boundary along the equator, theta equals pi over 2, uh, uh, the symmetry SU 2 thrush 1, it gets broken to SU uh, 1 thrush 1. So, so that's the uh, symmetry we will be interested in. Will be interesting. 
Let's see. Now, how do, do I do this? So I, I will be uh, considering very explicit uh, uh, spinners, <coughs> supersymmetry parameters. So I'm just writing down the solutions to the uh, killing, uh, killing spinner equations, general killing spinner equations. So I will be considering exponential minus i over 2 theta gamma 2 hat. Uh, so this is a matrix, and it acts on uh, exponential of i over 2 times phi, 0, and uh, epsilon bar equals i over 2 theta gamma 2 hat 0, which is minus i over 2 phi. Yeah, so. Um, so these are some of the uh, general skilling spinner equations, which I wrote down. And uh, they all, and, um, uh, and if you compute the supersymmetry transformations, and the, then the, you find that the supersymmetry squares to bosonic symmetries, and, uh, uh, and the, the bosonic symmetries involve some uh, killing killing vector field. So it, it gives a rotation of the sphere. And uh, the rotation is such that the, the boundary at theta equals pi over 2 is, uh, is preserved. OK. Yeah, so um, so, the, so, so I will be putting the boundary at uh, uh, theta equals pi over 2. And uh, in this limit, the spinners, the supersymmetry parameters, becomes both uh, basically 1, uh, 1. Uh, up to R symmetry transformation. Okay, Th This is because uh, gamma 2. Uh, uh, hat is a uh, 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 two by two matrix, and uh, we see. And if we set x one to be L tilde times theta minus pi over two, and x two is uh, L times phi, then uh, locally near the boundary, the system looks like this. So, so there is a boundary at x, x1 equals 0, or uh, theta equals uh, pi over 2. And uh, the, the, the remaining part is, uh, yeah, so the, the region on the left is uh, the bulk of the, the hemisphere. And uh, if you, OK, I haven't <laughs> told you the rule, but uh, if you compute the uh, 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 supercharge uh, uh, yeah, so, so in terms of the spinners, uh, uh, they, they look like this. And uh, in terms of the supercharges, it looks like Well, so in the in the convention of uh, in the convention of the, the textbook, mirror symmetry textbook, it looks like this.
And these uh, and this such uh, supersymmetry is known as uh, okay B type supersymmetry. Um, so, yes. Why do you have to put the battery at any fixed value? Why not any, any fixed value? Um, well, this is the this is the simplest thing, and uh, um, it, it may be pos it may be possible to okay. I think it's it's an interesting question whether one can actually put a boundary in, uh, at, uh, some somewhere else, and. Uh, uh, at least in the at least uh, uh, some interfaces can be put. Uh, at, at places other than the equator, like the, the for, I know that, for example, the Wilson loop can be placed away from the equator. So, so um, uh, I think it's an interesting question wh whether one can uh, put a, a boundary somewhere else and, and, uh, and for example, do uh, lo supersymmetric localization. But um, I don't, yeah, I don't know uh, for sure wh whether uh, uh, one can do localization. Uh, with a boundary at a general, more general location, but this, so this is a choice, and uh, the, and this choice is ne nice because uh, the supersymmetry local looks like a B-type. And uh, I think uh, um, Benny told you that near the north and the south poles of the uh, two sphere, the supersymmetry looks like A-type. So, so the theory looks like uh, a, a model, and uh, but now, now uh, the, the if we consider a boundary along the equator, then the supersymmetry there is a B type. So, if you consider, so, so for me, the the aim uh, of this talk is to compute the hemisphere partition function, and uh, so this hemisphere partition function then. Okay, how do I do this? The partition function gives an uh, interesting uh, okay. I think I'm doing it. The Hemisphere function, uh, function uh, gives an uh, uh, interesting coupling between A model observables at the North Pole and uh, uh, B type observables at the equator. So let me write it in equation. So just by analysis of supersymmetry, it looks like the, the Hemisphere partition function is uh, is of this form. So 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 something that depends on the boundary or boundary condition. It's a, so it's a, a, a brain. It's a D brain uh, preserving B type supersymmetry. So it's called a B brain. And uh, uh, on the North Pole we have A model. So that means that if if we do not insert any uh, operator, then it corresponds to the identity operator. And uh, uh, the algebra of, of operators of, uh, of uh, topologically twisted A model is called the, the, the A ring. So the Hamilton partition function appears to be computing a coupling, uh, coupling like this, coupling or pairing like this. And uh, I think I, I, I will come back to, to this later. So, so my, my goal is to uh, compute this, uh, this partition function. OK, so, I, so far I have only uh, explained the background. And uh, I want to uh, tell you about uh, the matter, con the, the field content. So we have we have a vector multiplet. F 
for uh, gauge group G. And this includes the gauge field A mu, uh, two real scalars, sigma 1 and sigma 2. And there are gauge in e, lambda alpha and lambda alpha, alpha bar. So alpha takes one and values 1 and 2. And uh, there is a, a real auxiliary field D. And then we also consider the chiral multiplet. And it's, uh, well, in representation. In the representation R of G. And the fields are uh, phi, psi alpha, and F. Okay. So these multiplets have already appeared uh, in the lectures uh, last week, uh, I think, many times. Okay. So yes. Regarding the ground version, so if I put theta equal to e by two, yes, I would get these spinners. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if I put gamma two multiplied by e, I would get real exponent. This, uh, I mean, how, how exponent disappear? So, so, um, so, so you are asking about the computation from here to here. Yeah, okay, so, so gamma too hot. Because gamma is complex matrix and i is also a complex parameter. So if I multiply complex matrix to complex parameter, I will get something real. Yes. And? Uh, are you, you, you're asking how to get rid of this? Yeah. Uh, yes, this is by uh, arithmetry ah, gate okay. transformation. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so the, uh, we'll be interested in the uh, vector and the chiral multiplets. So this is actually relatively complicated. OK, so now uh, I want to say a little bit about uh, supersymmetry transformations. But I I'm not going to write uh, all of the transformations. OK. Uh, so for, for example, for the vector multiplet, uh, we have Delta of a mu going to like uh, minus i over 2, epsilon bar, gamma mu, lambda plus lambda bar, gamma mu, epsilon. And uh, my convention is something like this. So uh, for example, if I write epsilon bar, gamma mu, lambda, lambda, then this means that so epsilon bar alpha with upper index. Now gamma matrix has uh, lower left, up, uh, upper right, and lower right index for the spinner. And the, uh, for the spinners, the indices are raised and uh, lowered by charge conjugation uh, matrix. Of course, uh, these are details, but uh, I gave uh, some exercises to check 
boundary con the supersymmetry of boundary condition. So, so uh, you are going to use uh, some transformations like this. Uh, okay, and then uh, there are other transformations for the color multiplet. Uh, we have so delta phi. So, so the, the transformation of the uh, complex scalar is epsilon times psi, where the contraction rule is uh, basically okay, gamma removed. <coughs> and uh, mm, okay, gamma psi is i times gamma mu epsilon d mu phi plus i epsilon sigma phi plus gamma <coughs> three epsilon sigma two phi plus well actually so mm, there is some convention dependence on the uh, of the sign of the R charge and I'm, I'm choosing I think Choosing okay some convention, this is which is actually the opposite from the paper I think. And then okay, th there is some formula for delta f like this. Uh, okay. Excuse me, are these transformations just like those on the sphere? Yes, yeah, yeah. So this is exactly the transformation on the on the sphere. That's right. So yeah, so, so the hemisphere is just uh, half of the sphere. So uh, we are using the same background and the same uh, uh, transformations. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I'm doing. I'm considering the boundary in two dimensions, but uh, the story uh, can be repeated in other dimensions, like three and four dimensions. And the people have indeed uh, uh, studied uh, uh, localization on uh, such, uh, uh, such spaces. And, I mean, they, the people have considered uh, hemispheres in well, four dimensions, definitely. And uh, in three dimensions, I think people have considered um, S1 times two dimensional hemisphere. So say that again. Do we have the two, full two truths of the symmetry on the hemisphere, or is it part of it? Probably? Part of it, part of it. That's right. Yeah. So um, yeah. So beta, beta by beta, by I mean uh, really a super subalgebra of full n equals two comma two, and uh, in particular now uh, B type subalgebra has uh, two supercharges. And it's also possible to consider A type, and uh, A type and B type are related by mirror symmetry. And, uh, and from four dimensions, uh, uh, these setups ar arise by dim dimensional reduction of okay, uh, either new minimal gravity, new minimal, minimal supergravity, or old minimal supergravity. OK. Now, okay. Now I want to write down the uh, supersymmetry boundary conditions. Okay, B type. Hmm. Now for the vector multiple. Uh, I will consider the following. Okay, so, so at theta equals pi, pi over two. So um, so so we are considering the field here. Okay. Uh, so we require that uh, field satisfy the following.
So here, here a, a, a1 really means, OK, a, I can also write a, a theta. And by bound, bound, boundary condition, we uh, require that the field strength is 0 at the boundary. So, so um, you see that uh, yeah, a1 is 0, but I don't, I don't do anything on a2 or a5. Uh, well, except that, OK, essentially, uh, this is a, a Neumann boundary condition on a5. So, so uh, this, preserves, this actually preserves a gauge symmetry along the, along the boundary. So, so this is a boundary condition. I want to consider. But it's also uh, possible to consider a, a boundary condition that breaks symmetry, but uh, I'm not going to do that today. OK. Uh, so this is for the vector multiple. Let's see. Now I'm going to uh, describe the boundary conditions in the chiral multiplet. Uh, the, main, the main boundary condition on the chiral multiplet is uh, Neumann. Neumann uh, boundary condition on the chiral multiplet. Hmm. Which says that d1 phi equals 0, uh, epsilon bar gamma 3 psi equals d1 epsilon bar psi equals 0, and f equals 0. Um, but it's also possible to consider an alternative boundary condition, which says that phi is constant, or OK. I, I choose the constant to be 0, so uh, phi is 0. Epsilon bar psi equals d1 epsilon bar m3 psi equals 0, d1 hat e to the minus i a phi f plus i d1 phi equals 0. OK. Uh, um, this, the appearance of e to the minus i phi may be annoying, but uh, it can be uh, removed by, again, uh, arithmetic gauge transformation. So, so it, it, to some extent, this is a matter of convention. Well, so if you go to a different gauge, uh, this disappears, and then the boundary conditions look more natural. Yeah, so in one of the exercises uh, for, for this lecture is to check uh, that, uh, that these, bound okay. these boundary conditions, actually uh, in flat space, the flat space version of these boundary conditions is uh, it, it, it preserved B type supersymmetry. So that's one of the exercises. Okay. Are, are these boundary conditions uh, elliptic? In other words, consistent with the equation of motion. I mean, the schema was already this. I see. OK, so uh, the way it's written, uh, these are not elliptic, I think. Yeah, because uh, I think imposing these uh, differential boundary conditions on the fermions is, uh, I think, it's too strong. Uh, if you try to solve the, um, to, 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 to if you try to form, formulate a, a variational principle. 
Yeah, but uh, for supersymmetry localization, this is, uh, this is enough. And uh, that's w what I'm doing, yes. So somehow it's hard to do the perturbation theory at the first integral, but you can nevertheless localize the, the final dimension. Yeah, so I think in, in this case, you, you can actually just remove the, well, at least for the Neumann, I think you can just remove the, this, uh, okay. this part. The thing that, uh, so, so for example, if you have uh, this equation, then you can do a supersymmetric transformation, and I think you, fi you find this. So. Right, so yeah, so if you, if you want to do perturbation theory, then uh, uh, you need to be more careful about uh, the boundary condition. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Now, okay, so, so these are the boundary conditions. Oh, okay, any more questions? Okay. So, so these are the boundary conditions, and uh, I'm still in the process of defining the theory. So, defining the theory on the manifold with boundary, yes. Sorry, I can't see you. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, it's just a gauge theory, so you don't even have a super conformal algebra. I, I don't have what? You, so you I don't. At the moment, you're just at the level of the gauge theory. Yes. So you don't have the n equals 2 super conformal algebra, right? Right. So where do you get the AC ring from? I get, oh, a, AC ring? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah so the, the question is uh, the following. So, so I, I wrote that the hemisphere Poisson function equals the overlap between um, uh, the B brain state and the identity operator in the AC ring. And, uh, but, but she pointed out that uh, I only have a gauge theory and I don't have super conformal symmetry. So, uh, how does that make sense? So, that's the question, right? Um, yeah, so. Mm, mm, mm. Did I, did I, well, what I, what I meant was, uh, so th that was a rough uh, equality, and uh, actually, I, I probably should have uh, put on a question mark whether that uh, equation is true or not. And, uh, 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 yeah, I, I was going to mention it late, uh, later, but uh, I, can, I can tell you now. Um, so we are considering a, a gauge theory, and uh, in some cases, so, so we, we so with the uh, uh, right uh, matter content and uh, uh, charge assignment, the, this gauge theory can flow to uh, uh, super conformal field theory. And then the, uh, uh, let's see. Well, historically, the, uh, once you get the formula for the hemisphere partition function, uh, f f from known examples, uh, it was apparent that hemisphere partition function compute uh, something called the, called the central charge, which can also be written as the overlap between the B-type B-brain uh, uh, B boundary state and uh, the identity element in, yeah, in the AC ring or the Ramon or the Ramon Ramon ground state. So, th so, so when we wrote uh, these papers, uh, it was a conjecture that the Hemsiapartion function computes such an overlap. And um, more recently, uh, I've already mentioned, uh, there, there's a, a there is a work by Bacas and Prenkner, uh, which use, uses uh, the sup super wide anomaly to show that uh, this conjecture is actually true. So, so it, it's, it's not trivial. It's not trivial uh, that uh, the, the calculation in gauge theory actually computes the uh, overlap uh, between the, the boundary state and uh, the identity operator. But uh, it, it, it can be shown in independently, yes. Yes. To be a state? Right. Uh huh. Okay. So, so the, the question is, uh, why is a uh, hemisphere uh, function function is uh, uh, is a number rather than a state? 
Yeah, so, so I think what is meant is that, uh, yeah, so path integral on a uh, uh, manifold with boundary can indeed uh, uh, represent, it can indeed re represent a, a wave function, right? So, yeah, so, so but, but uh, yeah, so in general, in quantum field theory, so it's good not because I need to <laughs> emphasize the general principle. Uh, in, in quantum field theory, uh, we need to distinguish two kinds of boundaries. Uh, so one, yeah, I forgot the general name, but okay. One type of boundary condition uh, supports a st uh, state, actually normalizable state in the Hilbert space. Okay, so, so, so uh, some, some type of boundary on the manifold represents, uh, well, on, on space time represents a state. On the other hand, uh, uh, there are boundaries uh, that are really boundaries. So, so these are not uh, uh, an int intermediate uh, state, uh, but rather it corresponds to the end of the world. So, okay. so, so, so some, 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 some boundaries in quantum field theory are end of the world. And, uh, so, so, and here we are, uh, yeah, yeah, but I, okay. Actually, I'm not, not completely now. I'm not completely sure if there is a clear distinction, but but that's a general story. And here, here I'm considering the the uh, boundary that is the uh, the um, the end end of the world. And in that case, uh, yeah. So, so an example is a uh, uh, D brain, okay, uh, in string theory. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, in the boundary in the sense of the of the world sheet. Um, so uh, if you have a uh, D brain boundary condition, then you can uh, construct a, a state which is a boundary state. So it's a state, but it's not normalizable. Okay. So so if you have a genuine boundary in quantum field theory, then you can formally construct a state, but it's not normalizable. So so if you consider no, com compute the norm squared, it, it actually diverges. Yeah. So so in that sense, uh, I do not regard the Hermitian partition function as a, a, a wave function. Yeah, it's more like a partition function. Okay, um, any other question? Okay. Now, yeah, so, in a, so I want to define a theory on a, a space time with boundary. And in order to do that, of course, I need to specify the uh, Lagrangian. Lagrangians and uh, actions. Uh, okay, I'm going to write action. Well, actually, yeah, so, so, and th there are two types of actions. So one is a physical action, and uh, the other one is a, a localization action. And uh, the theory is specified by the physical action, and uh, it takes the form. Uh, so the vector multiplet part, the chiral multiplet part, uh, the superpotential term, uh, theta, the topological term, and the Fi parameter. Okay. Uh, I think. Yeah, so, so basically, these are. Uh, I think I, I'm, I'm going to omit uh, uh, giving uh, the, these expre explicit expressions because uh, they were essentially given in Benini's talk, I think. But uh, there is one point. Probably at least one. Yes. One of the term then write explicitly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. So the the only important part is uh, uh, the superpotential term, which looks like f i d i w where okay where w is a superpotential so it depends on uh, phi looks like it looks like this uh, I think the remaining terms, I think you, most of you know. And the important thing is that if you compute the Suzy variation of the physical action, then uh, 
Hurwit vanishes except the superpotential term. Uh, so you can, okay, uh, yeah, so, so essentially, so, so the remaining terms are, uh, uh, can, can be written as uh, Suzy exact term plus boundary term, and the boundary terms vanish by the boundary condition. Yeah, that is true for uh, uh, vector and Cairo. Uh, okay, so the set term actually needs to be uh, supersymmetrized, and uh, if you do that, uh, yeah, it's supersymmetric, and uh, the Fi term can o is also, well, usually it's, uh, okay. On, on the two sphere also, it's a su we use a supersymmetric version. Well, I mean, it's a supersymmetric, yeah. Uh, supersymmetric action on the two sphere. Yeah, so, so anyway, uh, what's important is that the superpotential, the vari Suzy variation of the superpotential term um, is, uh, It's not automatically zero, and uh, this yeah, it, this looks like epsilon gamma mu psi i dry w plus conjugate. So so it uh, yeah so it becomes a boundary term. Okay, and this means. Yeah, what does this mean? This means the following. This implies the following. So the Hemia Pansion function, well, it's supposed to be yeah, given by uh, the path integral over field configurations uh, subject to B type boundary conditions. And the theory is defined by the uh, physical action. And uh, we might put a, a localization action also. But the, the problem is that. Uh, this is this does not represent a supersymmetric system because of the because uh, the variation does not vanish. So, so we need to do something about it. Um, so so this is a well-known problem, and uh, this term is called the uh, uh, Werner Werner term, and, uh, and this Werner term needs to be cancelled. And in order to cancel it, we include uh, the following term. Trace uh, in some vector space V, uh, path order the exponential of some, some version of, okay, script, this is script A, script A phi of the phi. So this is some version of Wilson loop. Um, but this Wilson loop, so, so this is called a boundary interaction. Um, and this go looks like the usual supersymmetric Wilson loop, A phi plus I sigma 2, well, in some representation uh, 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 for this uh, uh, for this vector space V. Yeah, and, and this vector, vector space V is called the champ Payton. So, so this is the familiar from string theory. champ Payton vector space. And it carries some representation of the, the gauge group, uh, flavor group, and uh, uh, arithmetic group. Uh, let's see. Um, and then there's a contribution corresponding to R charge. If there is a flavor symmetry, there is also twisted mass. Uh, 
So this is uh, okay. I didn't. I think I forgot to mention. Uh, Tilted mass is a scalar component uh, uh, for, for the vector multiplet background vector multiplet for the flavor symmetry. Well, th this was explained in Benini's lectures. Um, and now there is th there are some terms that depend on what I call Q. And it's conjugate Q bar. And here, um, so Q, Q is some operator that depends on phi, and it's an operator which maps, which it's a linear operator that maps V to V, uh, jump Ayton space to itself. Uh, okay. So, so what we want to do is to, yeah. Uh, so, so the role of the role of Q is that the, if you cons compute the uh, supersymmetry variation of the integrand of the path integral, then uh, each the variation of the boundary, the, bound the variation of the boundary interaction should cancel the Werner term. That's the role of the um, Q and the uh, boundary interaction. Let's see, what, uh, what's, what's next? No. <laughs> It's actually an interesting computation, and you can. It's 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 an interesting computation. Also, it's <coughs> relatively uh, non-trivial, and if you do it, uh, it it's actually uh, a rather long computation. And uh, for details, you can uh, you can look at the oh yeah you, you can look at the paper by uh, Herbst, Hori, and Page. I think 2008, 2007 or 8. So, so anyway, the upshot is that the supersymmetry variation of the superpotential term, it, it is in minus superpotential terms times trace of trace in V of P of exponential of I d phi. A phi. So this is zero if Q of phi squares to the super potential times the identity operator on V. Is that, is that statement clear? OK. Yeah, so, so this is the uh, most important uh, property of this uh, operator Q. Well, it's also called uh, the tachyon profile, or the, okay, it's also called the matrix factorization. Uh, and, uh, but uh, for, for this uh, physically to uh, make sense, Q has to obey uh, some uh, constraints. And okay, how do I? Okay, let me write it this way. So, suppose that. Okay, so G is an element of the uh, okay gauge group and uh, okay flavor symmetry group, which I denote by G F. And suppose that uh, rho is a representation of a gauge group and and the flavor group 
on the uh, Chan Payton space V. Then we need that uh, it satisfies the following. Yeah, so this is necessary for uh, the for this to be symmetry. And we also need that uh, for, for our symmetry, yeah, um, yeah, so there is a representation of, uh, <coughs> there is a representation of our symmetry. On the champ Payton space V, and uh, then Q has to satisfy, OK, um, this. So, so, OK, by capital R, I mean the, the action of R symmetry on the chiral multiplet field. The sign convention here is, is a little strange, a little strange, but this is a standard, I think. This is a standard choice. Uh, so, so anyway, so, so these equations need to be satisfied. And uh, in the exercise, in the exercise, that I give, um, I give, well, uh, at least one example. And uh, okay, I didn't explicitly ask ask you to do this, but you, you can also try to check uh, if uh, well, with, with with some appropriate choice of uh, representations, the uh, the the example I give in the exercise actually satisfies this. And also, I want to explain why this is called matrix factorization. So if the champ Payton space has a structure uh, so, so it, if it's Z2 graded, and actually yeah, it has to be Z2 graded, and yeah, okay, maybe this, okay, this is part of the actual <coughs> constraint. So Q has to be Q has to be odd, so this is uh, one requirement, and uh, then we can, uh, uh, okay, U using this decomposition, we can write Q as uh, block diagonal matrix with uh, non-zero entries A and non-zero uh, of diagonal entries A and B, and then Q squared equals V can be written as AB equals B A equals W times identity. So, so you, you see that, uh, yeah. So, so A and B indeed give a factorization of the uh, of this uh, holomorphic function W, which is usually polynomial. Okay. So I have eighteen minutes, right? I see. Mm -hmm. OK, so I, I explained, I explained the matrix factorization. Now I want to perform a localization calculation. And uh, basically, I'm, I'm going to uh, recycle what Benini did uh, on the two sphere. So, okay, first of all, I, I'm going to use the same uh, localization action. So, uh, so, I'm going to omit a lot of things. Well, I can omit a lot of things because uh, Benini did most of the work. Uh, yeah, so we use the uh, same localization action, and 
But actually, we, we are going to specialize. And, uh, and here, I'm going to com consider a Coulomb branch localization. Well, Higgs branch localization should also be inter interesting, uh, but uh, it has not been done yet. Uh, so now, for the vector multiplet, remember that we require that uh, F1, so the field strength is 0 on the boundary. So this uh, gives a, a strong constraint on the uh, localization locus. In particular, it means that, OK, so the field strength is 0 on, on, on the localization locus. Sigma 1 is 0. And uh, then, then what remains is uh, uh, the 0 mode of sigma 2, so the constant mode of sigma 2. So we get um, um, the path integral reduces to a finite dimensional integral over sigma, over sigma 2. And uh, for the chiral multiplet, we get if we phi equals 0. I think f is also 0. And of course, the fermions are all 0. Then we can evaluate uh, uh, physical action uh, on the uh, localization locus. And we find that e to the minus physical action is given by e to the, uh, OK, t times trace of sigma. OK, so I'm writing. So I'm uh, writing the result as if uh, the gauge group is, well, I'm writing the result for the gauge group UN. For gauge group UN. And uh, t here, t is the, the complexified FI parameter, which, OK. I think I, okay, I, I could write 2 pi in his, so Benini was using xi, so I think uh, in his convention, it would, t would look like 2 pi xi minus i, i theta, theta, or theta is a topological theta angle. OK, and uh, the boundary interaction, okay, we also need to evaluate the boundary interaction on the uh, localization locus. And uh, if you do that, you find that this is given by e to the minus 2 pi i times sigma plus m, where, OK, here, by sigma, I really mean minus i l times sigma 2. And m, um, m here, m is, yeah, OK, minus l times sigma 2 times the flavor part. Right. So this is the classical part. OK. Now I'm going to discuss the uh, one loop part. Determinant. Yeah, so the general principle is the following. So, um, so we, without boundary, uh, people have already computed the one loop determinant. And, uh, and the localization locus is also uh, a specialization of the, uh, uh, the severe case. And now, uh, when computing the one loop determinant, we only need to contributions. We only need to keep contributions from the modes that obey the boundary condition. So that, that's what we're going to do. OK. And uh, OK, for the chiral multiplet and uh, with Neumann boundary condition,
So this, so uh, okay. Formally, this can be written as uh, a product of uh, uh, weights in the matter representation and and the infinite product, which is divergent. And uh, okay, as Benini did, we, c we might do zeta function regularization and get like this. And if if you have a free symmetry and uh, uh, twisted mass, we also need to include them. But uh, the way it enters is the uh, same as, uh, uh, as sigma. OK. Um, Dirichlet boundary condition. This may be a bit interesting. Um, OK. Again, we have a, a product of uh, mm -hmm. weights, and there is an infinite product. Now, if you do zeta function regularization, you get something. Uh, okay, one over gamma, gamma function, one over gamma function. But I claim that this is wrong. This is wrong. Okay, so the so I I claim that zeta. So this is hard to read, right? So zeta function regularization well, is okay. I, I say not uh, not always correct. Okay, more more precisely. Uh, okay, zeta function regularization does not always automatically give the correct result. And now uh, I'm going to give you the. Uh, correct result and uh, uh, explain how to justify or uh, derive derive it from first principle. So the correct one loop de determinant for the Dirichlet boundary condition includes extra factors minus two pi i, so very specific factors, pi i times uh, w times sigma. I think I need to include minus i over q i times q over two divided by. 1 minus w sigma minus i q over 2. So then, then why do we need to include those uh, factors, right? So that's a natural, well, that's a crucial question, right? So and there are uh, two explanations. So one explanation which, I, which uh, we originally had in a paper was that uh, 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 there is a duality. Between okay, Dirichlet boundary condition and uh, uh, Neumann boundary condition plus some boundary condition bo boundary interactions. So yeah, so there is something called Atiyah Botto Shapiro construction of diesel brains. And uh, uh, it's 
there is some known duality between the boundary conditions. And uh, uh, in order for, for the one-loop determinant to be consistent with uh, such duality, we need to include uh, these factors. Uh, but there now, by now, uh, there is, uh, OK, it's, it's, I have not published it, but there is a um, uh, uh, first principle derivation of this, which is a uh, uh, Pauli Villas. Regularization. Yeah. Um, yeah, so re yeah. The computation for the hemisphere has not been done, but uh, Parivirat itself, uh, I wrote a paper, uh, I think, one, one year ago. So you, you can take a look if you are interested. So if you apply Parivirat, then uh, the ratio between the Dirichlet and Neumann. One loop determinant uh, turns out to be one minus e to the e to the two pi i times w sigma plus minus i i i times q over two. Um, and the Pauli Villas, uh, 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 this preserves uh, gauge and flavor symmetry. So, so if you demand that flavor uh, symmetry, okay, uh, gauge symmetry is preserved, gauge symmetry and R symmetry is preserved, then uh, Pauli Villas regularization gives a uh, uh, gauge invariant, uh, regular, gauge invariant that manifests supersymmetric regularization, and uh, th and uh, uh, this ratio is unambiguous. It, it, it's not ambiguous, okay? So, so uh, this is filter, and uh, it's consistent with uh, these expressions. So, yes. So, so if you can the power of virus, you already have the power of virus at the Lagrangian level before localization, or you have a power of virus afterwards. But if you add the power of virus from the outset, then supersymmetry is not considered supersymmetry. Well. So, uh, at which stage you introduce the power of virus regulator? Well, we, we could. Well, it's a general story, I think. So, so we we, st we we should start from the beginning by including the uh, particular ghost. Oh, is it consistent with the supercharge you're using? Yes. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, there is a supersymmetric version of power villas. That's, uh, oh, okay, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. Uh, Can you point out what's wrong with the function model solution? Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, in, pr in principle, there is no reason that uh, zeta function regularization should work. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. What I'm saying is not, again, okay, published, but uh, in, in general, you can uh, delete power virus regularization, uh, heat kernel regularization, and the zeta function regularization uh, by using the, uh, the, the, well, the heat kernel uh, method. And one can check how these regularizations uh, compare with each other. Um, but uh, uh, but usually what people have done uh, in localization uh, with uh, uh, zeta function regularization is not very systematic. And uh, so, so, so I, I would say that in general, there is no a priori reason that zeta function regularization should work. So the, its validity should be checked by, by uh, other methods like duality. Um, and, uh, and 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 the, the relation between the zeta function and the uh, uh, yeah and the uh, is clear for for uh, bosons, but for fer for fermions and the spinners, uh, the, the situation is more uh, uh, yeah, the, yeah so more care is more care is necessary and. It, and especially with in the presence of boundary, the situation is, is, is more subtle. Ah. So, if you get the ratio of the defect with the Neumann, how you are sure which one is correct and which one is wrong? Yeah, so, I mean, power virus regularization pres preserves the uh, uh, symmetries, gauge symmetries. Uh, uh, so, so, so if, you, if you are interested in results, that are compatible with gauge symmetry, this is the correct result. But actually, uh, okay, 
the, the Neumann Dirichlet boundary condition themselves, actually, they, they, the boundary condition themselves break some other symmetries, like charge conjugation symmetry. And uh, if, you, if you want charge conjugation symmetry, if you give more pri priority to charge conjugation symmetry, then uh, you should. Uh, uh, you should combine some regularization method with the proper counter terms. So, so, in, so in, in general, so two di different regularizations are related by uh, by choice of counter terms. Okay, and uh, regularization and the counter terms, uh, the combi their combination is uh, the invariant thing. The, the, the physical meaning thing is the combination of regularization, uh, UV regularization, and the counter terms. And uh, the the correct choice should, should be made according to which symmetry you want to preserve. And if you want to preserve gauge symmetry, this is a, um, so this is a correct result. Yeah, uh, OK. I think I, I want to uh, give an expression for the vector multiplet and, and then stop uh, for today. So, so for the vector multiplet, uh, there is a, a product of uh, positive roots. And again, there is an infinite product. So this is alpha. Alpha is a positive root, like this. And OK, for this. The function regularization gives a uh, well, uh, just a uh, well, compatible, okay, uh, consistent result, and uh, it is it's like this. Yeah. So I finished uh, giving. Uh, one loop determinant, and uh, yeah, I, I want to stop uh, for today.